Ahoy! How you doing everybody? We have a nautical theme going here today. Yeah, there's something about mermaids going on. They're kind of following me everywhere I go. The idea of them, the myth. I haven't seen a real one yet, but... And when I was thinking about this, I ran into this thing. Something I wear around my neck once in a while. I'm going to put it on right now. And because I'm away from my home base, I don't have all 79 of my 3D sculptures that relate to tarot. But I have these four as representatives. And by chance, because I picked these out, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I have this one. It's a mermaid. Perfect. She's holding a shell, which is like her instrument, that she plays, accompanied herself for her siren song. Some other things happened. Went out for a beer. One of the drinks was called the Dark Side, Mermaid's Milk. They had a big painting on the wall for the women's room, you know, ladies' room, and that was a mermaid. So everywhere I go, Oh, yeah, I was on the beach. It's nice where I'm at here. You know, it's like pretty much stays around 70. And uh, I look down and there's a broken shell, two of them, that formed what looked to me like a mermaid. The tail was very distinct. So it keeps popping up. And then I go to do this reading here. And because I don't have all my pieces with me, my sculptures, I've been doing other things. Like I have these charms here. Yeah, see? What's in there? Oh, yeah. Another crystal. So we'll pick one of these. And what I'm trying to do is use different divination tools along with cards. I'm going to use cards, too, to get you some messages. That's the main point of this whole exercise, doing tarot in the, in the first place. So let's start with this, what I'm calling art scrying. Scrying is like crying with an S on it. And that's when readers use, like, they do use crystal balls. It's kind of the same idea. But they have these scrying mirrors that are black. And you look into them and you look for information, images, or things that give you ideas, or things that might have messages for us. And we put them together with these other tools here and see what we get. So what I'm doing, I found this piece of paper here. Something was wrapped in it. Instead of throwing it away, we're going to use it today. I want you to look real hard at this thing. I've already given you a big hint. What do you see in here? Do you see any images? I see one. I can't get it out of my head. Once you see something, you can't get it out of your head. I kind of did a tracing, kind of like a drawing on my Galaxy Note. I'm going to show you that instead of drawing right on here, but I'm going to show you right now what I see. What I see, it's hard to hold it up, and it depends on the light. Here's the face, female face. This is her hair. This is her head, her chin, her nose right there. Goes down. This could be like a fin. This whole thing could be like her fin, which would be like our arm. This is her back. Her waist, it goes up to her rear end there, her buttocks, and that goes around this area here. Then it goes up and there's a tail. I think there's a tail up here maybe. I saw other things in here, too. So, you decide what you see. You don't have to go by what I see. You might see something totally different. We can turn it around. I see like an eagle now, flying at the top left.
And this is how many artists actually start their work. They don't like starting with a blank sheet of paper or canvas. They come up with these ways to get started, just a way to get started. They might paint over the whole thing once they even have something like this, but it's a great way to start. It feels like it's coming from someplace else. So do I have this back where I had it before? Let's see. I'm going to show you what I came up with. Yeah, so this maritime theme is really going here. All right, so let's see. Let's let's get a card. I'm going to use one of these huge cards here. Look how big they are. Can't shuffle these normal, they're so big. Kind of take them and put them through like this. them a little bit. Maybe turn this around. Yeah, you can't even grab them. They're so huge. Let me show you a regular card next to it. Here's a normal size card. Princess of Wands. Hmm. All right, so, you know, there's a million ways to shuffle anyway. Make your intentions. It's a place to start. So what I'm going to do is open the deck here, take the top card, see what we got. We have the Two of Swords. Looks like it's in reverse to me, but I'm, I'm not sure. Let's see what it looks like this way. Hmm. Let's see what, what else we get, because that's communication. Swords are communication, and when you have the two, it could be a blockage, block communication, because they're crossed like that. could be a choice. Information comes in, and it leaves you with a choice. So next, let's go to this. Let's give us a charm. Of course, I have no idea what's going to come out. Okay, here's what we got. Oh, look at this, an angel. Is that an angel? Yeah. I don't know what it says. Made for an angel. Somebody, is this made for you? Are you an angel? So we have an angel. We have a thing going with Mermaids. Hmm. Let's talk about mermaids a second, though. Because what's mermaids? Mermaids. Why, why are people fascinated with mermaids? It's kind of like folk, folk tales, folklore, mythology. Nobody's ever caught one that we know of, but people still claim to see them occasionally. And the story is that men out at sea hear these strange songs, and it lures them into the water. Some actually drown. The song can make them crazy. Otherworldly voices like. And there's other stories where they actually, the men go down and they, you know, unite with the uh, mermaids, live with them. There's a lot of different stories. It's like vampires. There's a million different vampire stories. And it's kind of the same thing. It's mythology. And why do people love mythology? It's to teach us stories, how to live our lives better. And that's what tarot is. All these things are about the same thing. They tell us something, and like remember when you're a teenager, break up with somebody or something traumatic would happen, and you'd hear a song, and the song sound exactly like it was talking to you. Nobody else, it was your story, the musician was talking to you. 
They made a song for you. Well, that's what we're looking for all the time. And those songs would help us. And here we are today, a lot of us older. They were our first oracles. They were, at least they were my first oracles, way before I knew what an oracle really was. So uh, why today? Why are we getting these today? Well, because I keep getting these signs. And when you get these signs, they come through your intuition. You notice them. You put them together. And you say, well, something's going on here. I don't know what, but I want to look into it more. So we do a reading, look for other signs. And the thing with the mermaids is they're hearing something. They're being tempted. That's what, that's what it is about in part, at least, right? Temptation. We'll see if we get the devil card out here to confirm what we're looking at. And even this one card we have, it's about communication. All sorts about communication. Well, the siren has her song. She's communicating. That's how she lures her prey to her. So we already have things connecting. We have an angel, though. What's the angel all about? Angels are other mythological figures. Instead of a tail, they have wings. They look part human, but they have these superpowers, these special attributes, these special, I guess you call them gifts. Is it a gift to have a tail like a mermaid or have wings like an angel? Well, the mermaids can swim super fast. They can live under the water. They can breathe. And angels can fly, so we can't do these things. They're beyond what we normally can do as humans. So there's ties here. Plenty of them. So let's get some more cards. Let's see what else we get. Well, I, st I started with this Hermetic Tarot deck. Let's use it. We'll do it over here. What do we get? There's the devil in reverse. Okay, what are we going to get? Too many. Wow. That one wanted to come out. That was the magician. We'll see. All right, you see that one? That one just kind of fell out. Six of Cups in reverse. That one did a backflip, side flip. Queen of Swords, more swords. Oh my God. Maybe we'll leave that one there. This is okay. Oh, interesting. Two of Cups was on the bottom. So we've got a lot of twos here. I'll put that over here. But you can hear that trash truck. Okay. So the first thing is we got to look at some twos here. What's twos all about? We have a two here, swords. Two of Pentacles here in reverse, and the Two of Cups upright on the bottom of the deck. Two, four, six, then we have a six here. Ah, oh, the noise. So two, twos 
you know, makes sense. It's about partnerships. It can be about conflict, though. And when we have a conflict, we seek out balance. That comes up all the time in readings. You're probably sick of hearing it, but I think we're all striving for balance every single day. Two pentacles in reverse. I mean, we have a lot of water here, more water than anything, and swords. But we do have this pentacle. Because it's in reverse, I think we should talk about it a second. <clears throat> Basically, that's about having difficulty trying to manage these things every day, trying to balance our lives. Like we said, might be feeling a little stressed there, tired, energy drain. We need to manage things a little better. Kind of might be feeling like we're falling behind, not able to keep up. And the Six of Cups, another one that stands out to me, the twos are so obvious. So I'm kind of caught by the other pieces here, the other cards. Six of Cups, that's all about memories. Can mean childhood, thinking back to when things were idyllic in our minds, at least. We tend to forget the bad times. Simple things in life, but in reverse, could mean that thoughts of our past are getting in the way. They're causing an imbalance. We're, we're wishing we could go back or recreate these times, but of course that's impossible. Change is inevitable, and that's another thing that comes with twos. Change, 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 never stops. It's kind of childish to think we can just go back and everything will be the way they were, but it's okay. We go back and forth all the time. It's normal. Maybe with that little angel there, might be a good time to ask for some help. That could be the advice part of this. And you know, the Queen of Swords, she's that tough lady. She's the person people go to for advice if they want the truth, if they want the hard truth. Tough love. She'll cut them down. If they mess around with her, they're not honest. They get mad at her because she told her, she told them the truth. They didn't want to hear something. She'll just cut them right off. Not like this one. Not, not literally. The Queen of the Thrones of Air. So, to me, I take this first card as our main energy, Two of Swords, and we have that Queen of Swords. She's the only court card so far here, right? Both about communication. Somebody wants balance. I think some messages might come in here. We might be thinking about these things, and then we hear something, or maybe we hear something first, and that sets us to go back into our memories. This Two of Cups is beautiful, actually. a positive union. There's another reference to mermaids. Scientists believe that these sailors who thought they saw or heard these females in the water, that they might have been manatees or dolphins, something like that. Just like when you're in the desert too long, you can have, what do they call them, a mirage, like a mirage at sea. Yeah, there's quite a bit of water, too. That's, that's kind of cool, since we're talking about mermaids. Yeah, let's clarify something here. Let's use this deck. Mystical Tarot. I'll have to shuffle off camera this time. Run out of room. When I split the deck, what I get? Six of Cups again. Same as that. The other cards, Eight of Pentacles, both in reverse. All right, let's clarify the Two of Swords. And I mentioned that's the, uh, the Madrone deck. I just got it recently. Beautiful thing. Beautiful. Goes way, way back. Whoops. Almost lost the cards. Okay, what do we get? Got a few cards here. On the bottom, Nine of Cups in reverse. So... Sure seems like there's some kind of union under rocks. Then we have the Ten of Cups, though. Ten of Cups. 
Wheel of Fortune. I'm sorry I didn't say it earlier, but I was going to say the wheel keeps turning. There's always change because we have all these twos. Twos are about change. Eight of Pentacles in reverse. That's not working hard enough on something. So this two here, this out of balance, needs more work. Needs to be taken more seriously. It's kind of advice. It's going to happen one way or another. Spirits jumping in. Put things off too long. And that too, if it is in reverse, I think it is. That means we're not making that choice. It's been too long. We need to make it. And the wheel's coming in. Wheel of Fortune's good. It's good luck. Good fortune. Beautiful here, Ten of Cups. I mean, come on. Wonderful. Very exciting, really. This is a great reading. It's like real life. We always have some bumps in the road, right? And strength. Just what we always need. Strength gets us a long way. That's Leo there. Major Arcana. So we have the Wheel of Fortune Major, Strength Major, Ten of Cups. So we got an awful lot of water. Pretty good balance. The only thing I don't see is fire. Do we have any fire? Oh yeah, we have we have fire. That's what the strength card is. Leah, what I just what's the matter with me? Huh? Alright. Gotta get some roomy. It's a shame this Nine of Cups is in reverse, though. We go from the Nine of Cups to the Ten of Cups, though. Ten, nine of Cups in reverse, so way over here, bottom of the deck. That's bliss. You can see it's a union. It's like having almost everything. Under that's the Queen of Wands. Very good. All right, let's see what we get. This light's starting to get on my nerves, coming through the window. By the way, these four pieces I have here each represent one of the elements. Air, earth, fire, and that's strength, by the way, and water. There's a lot of signs that this reading is important, that we needed to hear this. At least some people needed to hear this. Wow. Can't, can't take all them. All right, here's one here. Alusa, Star of Venus. I believe Venus is in retrograde or it's going to be in retrograde real soon. So we're going to look this up in this beautiful book. Number 26. I don't know if I can stop that light from coming through. No, I can't get rid of it all the way. Sorry. Can I move this thing? All right. 26. Let's go to the number. I'll show it to you so you can take a screenshot. Here it is. Short. Okay. I am the pure light, my son. I'm not a handful of worthless dust. I'm not just an empty shell. I'm a regal pearl formed in this world. Close your eyes to see and become aware of me. Perceive me with eyes that see the unseen. Come into the mystery to find me. I'm a carefree visitor here for you. Rumi. Well, this is great. More references, more tie-ins, more threads coming together. It's talking about shells, empty shell. I'm not an empty shell. How many shells are on the beach? Broken and empty. But we're not an empty shell. We're pearls formed in this world here that we're in now. We're in this world. But at the same time, we need to close our eyes. And with these swords, sometimes with these swords, we're too much in our head. We need to use our heart and our feelings, our emotions. 
and get balanced, balance them all out. One's not good without the other. So this is saying to close your eyes so you can become aware of me, and that's spirit. Perceive me with the eyes that see the unseen. So this is our intuition, our third eye. It's our gut feeling. Come into the mystery to find me. We're welcoming you in. This is an invitation, an opportunity. Come. Come into the mystery. And I want you to find me. I'm a carefree visitor here for you. That could be like the mermaid. Carefree visitor. Splashing around. Zooming by. The water is weightless. This whole thing about close your eyes to become aware of me. This is all like magic. It's all mystery and myths. And it goes on to say, with great blessings, great growth is possible. However, the blessings don't do the growth for us, making it magically happen. They give us the oomph we need, the power, and the opportunities and assistance we need. It is still we who take the journey. And we have the strength piece right here. That's what this is talking about. There's opportunities. With change comes opportunities. We do the work. Here, it's saying we're not doing the work. We need to do the work. We do, we get the whole, we get it all. Right here, Ten of Cups. Beautiful reading. This can be for anyone. You, me, any sign. We're all interrelated. The planets, the sun, the moon, they're above all of us and around all of us. Our charts are full of different elements, signs. I, I recommend highly that you go and do your chart if you don't have it done. It's free. I have a link down in my description box there. Cafe Astrology. All right. Hope you found this interesting. I think there were a lot of good messages here. I might go back to the regular cycle, go through each sign individually. We'll see. I'm going with the flow myself. I'm taking this advice. Change is going on. Wheels turning for me as well as you. This looks like a wheel over here is too. The infinity sign going around and around, trying to go with the flow. That's what this reading's about today. Okay, thanks for coming. Love y'all.